My name is Dr Scott Ling. Uh, I'm a marine ecologist with the uh, Institute for Marine Antarctic Studies. Some of my area of specialty is on the dynamics of temperate rocky reef ecosystems. Some of the work I've been involved with recently has been uh, trying to understand the dynamics of sea urchin grazing, not only just here in Tasmania, but also globally. The reefs in eastern Tasmania have undergone major change in the past 20 to 30 years. What we see is, is a lot of these reefs have, have been accumulating numbers of urchins and, and getting to this point where the ecosystem collapses. Sea urchin bounds are basically moonscapes, so these are just bare rock areas which are now devoid of all the, all the kelps and all the larger structure forming species of kelps on, on the reef. Uh, that is all completely gone and it's replaced with just a, a barren moonscape. There's some coralline algae that grows on the surface of the rocks and filamentous algae uh, and this is what allows the urchins to actually persist once they've eaten out all the large juicier kelp. So it's really interesting in that they don't eat themselves out of house and home and, and this is all part of the way in which these urchins can maintain these, these barren unproductive states. They're able to switch diet uh, and actually persist in that environment. So once a balance forms, we can be locked into it for the long term. We've been able to define the, these key tipping points in the system. So uh, in the sea urchin grazing system, um, we, we have a really good handle now on the number of urchins per square metre that it takes to collapse the kelp bed uh, versus the, the number of urchins you would have to take off the reef in order for the kelp to come back. So it's leading to some really practical outcomes uh, that, are, that are being used here at IMAS, uh, particularly with uh, some of the, the modelling work that's uh, been going on with my collaborator Craig Johnson. We were really being able to define the dynamics of this ecosystem to, to maximise sustainability of the kelp beds and all of those other fisheries such as abalone uh, and lobsters that are dependent on healthy kelp beds. So my work on uh, sea urchins has, has resulted in an invitation to uh, write a, a paper for uh, the Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society of London um, where I've been part of a, a global team of authors that have brought together uh, all, all the dynamics of, of marine ecosystem collapses and, and this is showing some really interesting patterns for how marine ecosystems collapse and how for the fortunate situations, how, how some of those collapsed ecosystems can actually recover. So now, one of the key findings out of all of this is that it's often, it's not one culprit that causes a collapse, it's usually the, a whole bunch of factors that combine to, to cause a collapse in the ecosystem. So you've really got to reduce all those stresses and make the conditions basically perfect for the system to show recovery. Um, and this can take a lot of work, so once the ecosystem collapses, very hard to get back. So the, the, the key outcome of this is that this ounce of prevention is worth a, a tonne of cure. So we've really got to make sure that we can maintain a resilient ecosystem and prevent collapse in the first place. So part of the work I've been involved with is trying to define those tipping points so we can work out uh, where the ecosystem lies, how close it might be to a tipping point to ensure that we, we, we don't push it too hard uh, and, and ensure that it's actually sustainable in the long term.